All right, welcome back to another UiPress video. Um, in today's video, we're just gonna have a quick look at some of the new features in UiPress uh, Pro, and uh, maybe one or two that also came out in UiPress Lite recently. Um, so yeah, let's get stuck in. So here we are in the WordPress admin. Uh, we don't have any templates live, so we've just got the default admin, and we're on the UI Builder page. Um, so you might notice, if you've got a keen eye, we have the UI settings uh, quick option just down here now. Uh, this will just open up the general site settings. And in the most recent release, uh, the site settings has had um, a few different improvements added to it. We've now got a search option. Uh, we've got a lot of settings now, um, so that just allows you to jump straight to what you're looking for. And um, there's been some other minor little tweaks too. Um, but the main thing we want to look at today is this extensions tab here. And we've got three extensions, menu builder, user management, and content folders. Uh, so the first feature set we're gonna look at is the menu builder. So if we enable that, save the settings down here, and we're just gonna refresh the page. And what you'll see now is we've got the menu builder right under the settings there. And we haven't created any menus yet, so let's jump in. Cool, so what we've got here is a replica of your current um, admin menu. From here we can make changes, like change the name of um, the menu items. Uh, we can set icons. Um, we can drag and drop, rearrange. Uh, we can toggle the visibility of stuff. And we can also add custom classes, change the URL, and set a capability that will allow you to um, not only hide uh, items, but if you add a capability um, that the certain user you're building the menu for doesn't have, then they're not gonna be able to access that uh, menu item even with the direct link. And we've also got the settings option here. So you can give the menu a name. And we can make it active. And we're gonna apply it to my current role. And we can also enable op auto update or have that off. Um, auto update will, when enabled, do its best to uh, amend the current menu uh, when plugins or certain things aren't there anymore or when new plugins get added um, and make sure it's always up to date and new items are added uh, when required. Cool, so if we just save this out We'll see we've now got a menu here, and if we refresh the page, uh, all the changes have been added to the default WordPress admin menu. And um, if you're using the UI templates, then it will also apply there, and it means you don't have to uh, mess around in the UI build and make multiple menus there. It's a bit easier to manage from this UI. And yeah, so we also, on top of that, have um, a batch export and a batch import, which makes um, building these kind of default menus out for different sites uh, that little bit easier. You can have as many menus as you want um, applying to different roles. Uh, yeah, so I hope that makes um, menu management a lot easier for, um, for your sites going forward. Cool, so if we go back to the UI builder, let's take a look at our next feature set come up into the extensions tab. And here we've got content folders. Uh, content folders were a feature of UiPress version two, and we've now brought them back. Um, new and improved, of course. Uh, so when that is enabled, you'll see content folders. We've got a new tab here for settings. Uh, we've got three options down here. The folders per user, um, if enabled, um, means they'll only ever see their own folders. Um, in this current version now, things can be in multiple folders instead of just one. Uh, so if you have this uh, enabled, um, people can organize their own content as they were, as they wish, and um, uh, that won't affect anyone else's uh, folders on the system, and no one will see or be able to delete um, each other's folders. Uh, so very cool feature. Um, we also have folders for type. Um, when that is enabled, um, folders are 
linked to uh, the current type they were made for. So if you have it enabled for posts and media, then if you create a folder for posts, for example, um, then that folder is not going to show um, when you're using the folder system for media. Um, if it's uh, disabled, of course, then um, then any folders you create will be the same across uh, post types, uh, pages, and media. And finally, we have the option here to just change um, where the folder system is going to load. Um, so it doesn't have to just be on media or posts, it can be on pages or also custom post types. Um, completely up to you. Um, but let's check it out. So we go over to posts and we've got the folder system just loaded up here. Um, there's no folders in, uh, there's no items in that folder. But we can, of course, add something, just drag and drop. And there you have it. Um, if we just go back to UI settings, content folders, and let's apply it for uh, pages too. Here we've got um, some pre-made folders as well. There's some stuff already in this one. Uh, we have a look at products, there's nothing going on. Team, we've got some dummy posts there. Um, everything's drag and drop. You can drag some folders into here. And everything can be edited, deleted, um, create new folders, change the colors. And we have the same uh, for media too. Cool. So the last thing I wanted to look at in this video is going to be um, the user management features. So if we come down to extensions, uh, we've got the user management block here. Let's turn that on. And you may have noticed that when that was enabled, we get a new option here for the activity log. Um, the activity log is able to track and, um, well, <laughs> log any user actions, anything that happens on your site, like uh, plugin activations, plugin deletion, um, post status changes, pretty much anything that goes on um, can be tracked by the activity log. Um, once enabled, you have a few different options here. Um, so we can um, anonymize the user IP addresses to make sure um, everything's compliant with the, the data protection within your area. Uh, we've got options to limit the max amount of history items to keep. Um, so obviously you don't want to um, flood your database with uh, millions and millions of items. You want to keep that under control. Um, you can also set an expiry date on um, history items. So I think by default it's only kept for 60 days, but if you only want to keep uh, actions on your site for the last two weeks or how, how long you want, um, you can change that here. Um, there's certain actions that you might not want to be tracked, um, and those can be disabled here. And we also have this new option uh, to use a remote database. Um, and this is great, especially if you have a really active, um, busy site with a lot of changes going on. Uh, you want to keep as much history as possible without, without affecting um, the default WordPress uh, database. So here you can uh, add add your uh, database details and connect to a remote database. You can test the connection straight from the settings, make sure we're all good. Here we've got a connection successful. And now any new history items are gonna be saved in that database and kept clean from your WordPress one. Uh, once, uh, did we enable that? Uh, no, we didn't, there we go. So once you've enabled the user management and the activity logs, um, if we refresh the page under users, did we refresh? Oh, what's going on here? Oh, it's our menus because I didn't turn on auto update. So when I was talking about auto update in the earlier video, 
um, because this isn't enabled, uh, any changes to the menu that might happen, uh, like enabling the user management, um, are not going to reflect. Uh, this is really great for some scenarios where you really want to lock down the menu and make sure um, any changes don't um, throw up new menu options for your users. Um, but in this situation, we do want to access some new stuff, um, and it's very unlikely that you'd have this set as an admin, um, or you'd at least have auto updates set anyway. So let's just turn this menu off. And when we refresh the page, we've now got the user management under users. Cool. Uh, so here we have the new user man management page. Um, you've got a nice clean table of all your users. Uh, we've got uh, instant search. You can filter by role. Um, you can also filter by the date uh, the user was created. Uh, we can fire up new users here pretty quickly. And you can also amend the table data that's shown, um, how you sort them and the amount per page. Um, some of the cool features of this user management section here, uh, we've got some batch options, such as uh, we can send messages um, to these users. Uh, we've got all the attachments there, um, the email, sorry. Um, you can set your reply to email, subject, um, format your message and send away. Very simple. Uh, we can also batch update roles. And um, we can also send uh, batch password resets. And of course, we can batch delete users as so long as we have um, the appropriate um, capabilities to do that. Uh, if we go over to roles now, we can also uh, edit roles. Um, we can change the labels. And one of the other new features uh, that this has brought into it is um, login redirects for uh, role. So we currently have login redirect in UiPress, but it was just a catch-all uh, for all users in all roles. Uh, now this can be set per role and it will work without a UI template. Um, so this is a really cool new feature um, that uh, was just released today. Uh, but from here, we can manage all the capabilities of the role. We can change the name um, and we can also create uh, custom capabilities um, depending on your needs. Cool. And then last but not least, we've got the activity tab. Um, and so here are all our uh, changes that have happened on our site recently. Uh, got a couple of post status changes, post created and post deleted. Um, we can change uh, filter by status, sorry here, um, by any actions that have happened on the site. Um, we can also uh, filter by the role that made the changes, uh, the date that happened, those changes happened on. And uh, we can also search. Um, that's particularly useful if you want to hunt down some changes made by a rogue IP address, and you could do that. And of course, we can um, we can delete from the batch options here. Or if you want to delete all of your history, then you can do that um, from these options just there. And the nice thing about the activity log um, is that once enabled, if you want to um, investigate by a user, then uh, it's also synced into this uh, user um, experience here. So from this panel, we can see the general user details, but we can also see the recent page views and um, as well as the recent activity that's happened on the site via this user. And we can also jump straight into um, a couple of user options here, such as edit, password reset, send message, and um, log out everywhere else. Cool. Uh, the last feature I wanted to just take a quick look at, um, this is actually a UI press light feature. Um, if we come back to the UI builder, uh, we have this option in the site settings under advanced called um, load front and outside of frame. 
So by default, WordPress, um, not WordPress, uh, by default, uh, UiPress, um, when an active uh, template is applied, it keeps everything within um, this frame here, which means even when uh, visiting the front end of your site, it creates this kind of seamless uh, transition between back end and front end. Um, some people want to use it like that. Some people would prefer it to work uh, more traditionally like uh, WordPress does. Um, and now that is actually possible. So if we go back to the UI builder, and into site settings, down to advanced. And if we now enable this load front end outside of frame, uh, when we now visit the front end of the site from the admin, um, it's gonna load um, like it would in WordPress. So just with the toolbar without um, the kind of admin frame. So here we go. There we go. So there's no admin frame anymore. And again, totally up to how people use it. Um, everyone is different, uh, but it's a pretty useful feature to have there. And I know a lot of people will be happy to see it. Cool, so that's gonna do it for this video. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching and uh, enjoy using some of the new features. As always, we're open to feedback, um, so looking forward to hearing uh, any of that. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video.